This episode of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast is sponsored by the best-selling book, Halloween Horror Nights Unofficial, The Story and Guide 2017. If you're brave enough to attend Universal Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights, you better believe you'll need a survival guide. Head over to Amazon and pick up your copy now and get the stories behind the scares and never miss a trick. Covering the Universal Orlando Resort for six years, you are listening to the unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast. Hello and welcome to episode 265 of the unofficial Universal Orlando Podcast. I'm your host Tracy, and with me I have Lee. Hello everyone. And Darren's not here because he's got his Antoma visiting. <laughs> Um, But in his place, we've got a special guest. We have for your listening pleasure, the lovely Andy Jamatalera. Hi, Andy. And to honour Darren, what's up, internet? Yeah, (laughs) that is lovely. (laughs) Awesome. Andy, you are coming to us from Belgium, are you not? Yes, the wrong side of the planet, Belgium. (laughs) Ah, but you have great chocolate and waffles. (laughs) That's true. And put them together and that's even better. (laughs) And that's one of the things I remember about my trip when I was a kid. The the waffles and the chocolate. Yum. Um, Before we get started, we we just wanted to say, you know, we're sending good vibes and love uh, love to all of our listeners and friends who are in the path of Irma at the moment. Well, they are as Um, recording. Literally as recording. But when this comes out, they won't be. No, so we hope that you've you've all come through unscathed and with minimal damage to your homes and property it's pretty scary looking it is scary stuff it's uh yeah don't really know what to say about it just hope you kept safe so shall i run through some producers club birthdays yes okie dokie right so of course it's september and this month we have on the 13th anthony mendola's birthday happy birthday happy birthday and on September the 14th, we have a dedicated birthday. Andy has given up his birthday and would like us to wish his son, Jarrett de Matalare. I've just been told how to pronounce it, so I'm still practicing. Jarrett, Jarrett de Matalare. It's his birthday on the 14th. So happy birthday, Jarrett. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to my son. Yes. 18. 18. Awesome. Yes. That's brilliant. And a very talented musician he is as well, people. Yes. Keep an, keep an ear out for that name. Promise you. And on September the 15th, we have Lonnie Clay's birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And then it's the turn of Shana Roberts on September the 18th. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> There's lots this time. <laughs> and finally, on September the 25th, we have Joseph Wallen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So yes, have lovely birthdays, people. And uh, don't forget to send us a slice of cake. Yes. Yes. Right, where are we going to go now? I know, let's hear from Chris Zavala with a clip of his report from Volcano Bay. Oh, well, Chris is our, he seems to be our resident Volcano Bay expert. I think he so, lives there, yes. you know. <laughs> What's up, UOP? This is Chris. And Alexa recording live from Volcano Bay. And we just want to give you guys an update uh, since last time we are out here during opening weekend. I'd like to report that the rides have been a lot more consistent. They haven't really gone down that much. And the wait times have been averaging around 45 minutes, maybe an hour, with Krakatau being the longest at 160 minutes. And uh, it also just looks like a finished park. The cabanas are all done. Most of the photo spots are also done as well. And, you know, there's not really anything lacking at this point. And I'd like to add that the food was just as amazing as the last time we came. This time we ended up getting the pepperoni flatbread and the pineapple upside down cake, which was surprisingly so amazing. Yep, definitely got to agree with that. So, I mean, in short, make a trip out here if you haven't done it yet. So, signing off, this is Chris. And Alexa. Until next time. Bye. That was awesome. Andy, quick question. When was the last time you were out at Universal? Um, 2015. So same year as us then. Yeah. Well, obviously sitting back... Same year, the same, the same week you were there. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 
Uh, how did we yeah. not meet you, Andy? I know. We tried, but at the last minute, <laughs> something came up. Yeah. Um, next, next time we'll coordinate. Ah, so we s- so sitting back watching how Volcano Bay is playing out, how how would you feel about it at the moment? If you were if you had a trip booked within the next sort of two or three months, would you be looking to go? Or would you be looking to be postponed? Or would you would you be worried about going there? I think I would go because uh, it is always such long time with, between visits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I would just if I would go within three months, I would go there because otherwise it might be two years before my next chance. So. Would you That's be concerned point. about the experience that you were going to have? I, I don't like waiting long. I know they're not waiting in line thing, but if you have to still wait two hours to get on a one of yeah. the rides or attractions, you still have to wait around. Yeah, it's such a so. weird situation at the moment with Volcano Bay because. Obviously, you listen to Chris and his experiences. They've been a few times, and it's been really good. But then, as I said on the last two shows ago, that Craig Lucas went, and he had a horrendous time. Mm. So just it's it's one of those that they're still working the kinks out, and every now and again, you might hit a bad day. But overall, it seems to be that they're, they're starting to get on top of things. And I think, Tracy, we always talked were about going it. to start getting on top of things, you know. Quite a lot. Um it, they were always going to struggle getting it to where it needed to be without putting people through it because they never really had chance to yeah. to do a test run on yeah, it. It was all based on algorithms and models, wasn't it? Yeah. To a point. And then it's been rammed since the first day it was open. Mm-hmm. And well, it never was not going to be. No. Um, I think next year is probably when you're going to find that it's settled down mm-hmm. properly when they've had a chance to look at all the, the information that they've gathered over the last few months and stuff and then start working it out. But it's like Andy, you just said there, you hate waiting in lines and it's such a weird thing to be a theme park fan and hate waiting in lines because mm-hmm. it's just, that's what theme parks are about. Yeah. But we know the tricks. <laughs> you know, yes. go, go early, do so, some other things in between, yeah. slower rides in between and stuff. So. Yeah. So that's the Stay thing. at the hotel. Yeah, definitely. You know, with, uh, yeah. Express passes and all these things. Mm-hmm. That, that's the thing about Volcano Bay. You're going to be waiting for the, to to with your with your, ugh, with your virtual queue. You're going to be waiting, and there's only so much lazy river you can do. Yeah, but then even yeah. when you go, when it's like right now, you're, you're still still, you're still waiting in line. You're still not walking to the front of that ride and getting on it. No. I think we discussed it in depth on two shows ago with Darren that this it's like a queueless system. It's, it's, you, it's never going to happen. I actually, I, I, I took it out because I didn't have time for it, but uh, Mikey Stewart got in touch with us mm-hmm. uh, from the Track podcast and he said, Andy, being in Europe, have you ever been to Europa Park? No, that's still on my list. Yeah, I was, I was too. too. And Mikey goes yeah. quite a lot and he said they they don't have any front of line they have no upcharge like Express Pass or anything like that. And he said, because of that, the lines move like they should do. So y- you don't mind joining um, a long queue because you know it's going to run quickly because he mm-hmm. said they concentrate their lines on, like their rides on the throughput rather than, you know, giving people the option to cut the front of lines. And he said, you will join a, a line that looks long because you know, you, you even though it's a long line, you're still not going to be queuing. Yeah, a long time. You're, you're going to be moving and moving and moving, and yeah, it's just like when Express Pass and Fast Pass first came in. Obviously, it was free, and then Universal and Disney have obviously found a way to upcharge that now. Um, so you can't blame them, I suppose. But it would be interesting to see how the parks would run without without those Express Passes. But you know, the, the, like the, I don't think they can do that anymore. No, I don't think they can. But this queueless to to say something's entirely queueless is is um, it's never gonna happen. It's not. You can't have it. It's it's, it's an just, impossible it's, dream. It, it is because. Yeah. But it, but again, you've got it with Fallon. They've said that Fast and Furious, when that opens, is going to be queueless as well. <sighs> and. Uh, to ever get to a point where a ride is where you can reserve your time and you walk up to that ride and get straight on it, I don't think it's ever going to happen unless you've got a theme park with about a thousand rides in it. Do you think every? Do you think the entire parks are going to end up being this queueless system? Well, they've tested it, haven't they? They tested it with, I want to say it was Cat in the Hat 
and Despicable Me before Volcano B opened. I remember Seth saying, so I think they're looking to do it at some point. And removing standby lines full stop. That I don't know. Because that I think would be detrimental. I don't think you can have everything queueless. But I think, no. but it's, you're going to have a weird. Well, I was in between. Yeah, you're going to have exactly. a weird. Well, uh, exactly. You're going to have to have stuff to do while you're waiting. Because yeah, put it this way, I'm not paying those gate prices to be walking around looking at my, my watch all the time. No, and that's what concerns me about going to Disney next time. But Andy's on, and I'm not allowed to say anything bad about Disney, so I will be quiet <laughs> from this point on about Disney. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> I know you always chastise me. Everyone chastises me for, for hating on Disney, but... Uh. Yeah, because you don't really. I do. No, you don't. <laughs> I That's do. fine. You don't go. Me and the kids will That's go. fine. I'll have or a day at Universal kid. on my own. Darren, you're listening. Me and you will have a day out. And Hunter, all three of us. And Nina. Nina, you can come with us as well. Fine, then you can babysit when I go well, drinking. That's one, the, that's one less in the Disney queue. So. <laughs> yeah, I like your thinking. It's Andy. one less person in the sea of people at Star Wars Land. Yep. Yes, that's going to be <laughs> that's, tremendous. It's going to be crazy. Your pixie just just ran out, didn't yeah, it? it? Ran out. Actually, out. find a new word for that. I mean, you look at you only have to look at Pandora now. The Pandora's busy, and that's a yeah. uh, Pandora's busy enough as it is, with, and that's a, based on a property that no one really cares about. What happens? Not anymore. Not yeah. even then, really. What happens when you build an area in a theme park that eighty percent of the population of the planet cares about? Mm-hmm. In a park that I still don't believe can cope with it. No. But anyway, they should keep it open twenty four seven. Yeah. I think they will do if you're prepared to pay $650 a night for the Star Wars hotel. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) For that, I want room service by Darth Vader. No, you don't want. I do. I want them to feed me using the force. (laughs) You want to be force fed? (laughs) (laughs) Ha ha! Oh my God. Before this gets silly. It's, It's already got there. I'm going to take charge. I think we should move on. Let we do on. have a show to do. I'm going to pass over to Andy to talk about Terminator 2 3D's closing. Mm, be gentle. Yeah. Yeah, Terminator 2 3D. Last Thursday, Universal Orlando revealed that they are set to close another long standing attraction. In a press release sent out last Thursday, Universal said Terminator 2 3D at Universal Studios Florida will run its last show on Sunday, October 8th to make way for an all-new life action experience based on the high-energy Universal franchise. It will open in 2019. Many exciting new experiences coming to the Universal Orlando Resort as we continue our epic road. Stay tuned, more details will be released soon. Rumors have been long standing about the attraction and many people were expecting a copy of Universal Studios Hollywood Walking Dead walkthrough attraction. But with the press release stating as universal franchise, this doesn't seem feasible. We have been also hearing that it may be based around DreamWorks How to Train Your Dragon, strengthened by the fact that How to Train Your Dragon was a property thrown around in a recent email survey. And given that Universal owns DreamWorks, it makes perfect sense. We'll keep an eye on the situation. Yeah. Mm. I am very, very sad that T2 is closing. Yeah. On a good note, no Walking Dead. I think that's, that's a good thing. That's a very good point. Funny. But with, with uh, Terminator franchise getting a reboot, I was hoping they would do a refurb or mm. something new Terminator. Anybody who's listened yeah. to the show for any length of time knows that I will state that T2 3D is my favourite 3D attraction oh, I anywhere. Love it. I think it's just another nail in the coffin of having live actors as part Mm -hmm. of shows in theme parks now, and it's such a shame. I mean, I understand, but a How to Train Your Dragon stage show thing, and there is one kicking around. I've seen like big puppety things Mm. of How to Train Your Dragon, and it makes more sense that they're going to use a franchise. Like, I've heard... I want to say rumours, but I've heard pretty strongly that it will be How to Train Your Dragon mm. from a few of my sources. 
I do feel, though, that we're dumbing the park down to the smaller family crowd. And it, always, it was always one of those great things that that's how it was different to Disney. It was for the older kids and adults. It didn't shy away from certain things. And it's just... But then how to train you... The DreamWorks stuff for me is more that adult side of animation, I think. More than the Disney stuff is. Uh, what what ratings do they have? Yeah, well, of course, they're still kids' films. Exactly. Yes, I love them and they're cute. But I want a bit of edge. How do you know it won't have a bit of edge? Because it's a puppet. Andy, how would you feel about How to Train Your Dragon replacing T2? Obviously, we're sad about T2, but if it, if it has to be anything, How to Train Your Dragon. Well, it's better than... Walking Dead. Yeah, I do agree. I <laughs> That's do agree. not much of a compliment. I love, I love, yeah, I love Walking Dead, but I think the season eight, it's at its end. Book yeah. is going to end. Mm. By the time mm. they build something, it's probably be gone from television, so that's a good thing. Yeah. And I think How to Train yeah. Dragon is, is a nice franchise, but it's not Terminator. No, no. that's how I feel. I mean, yeah, I love How to Train Dragon. Because isn't it, isn't it next year or the year after that all the rights for Terminator revert back to James Cameron? Ah, so they may be preempting. So I'm pretty sure that he's the next Terminator films, Arnie's coming back in it, but rather than it being like a dodgy thing with the last one, it's going to be um, kind of like Lance Henriksen's character in Alien 3. He, he will play the character, like the actual person that all the Terminators are right. made to look like. How's it going to do with that? Because he's old. Well, no, because that's the thing. He was the person that, oh, that he's he modelled them so on. he's aged. Yeah, sorry, I'm with you. Yeah, so rather than him being a Terminator, he will be the pers- the actual living person that they modelled yeah. all the T-800s or T-800s or T-80s. T- uh, T-somethings. T- T-800s, T-800s, T-800s yeah. Yeah, the T-1000 was... Yeah. Yeah. Um... Because that Walking Dead attraction in Hollywood actually looks really good. It's yes, better it than... does, but the pro- I think the problem is with um, Halloween Horror Nights, it, it's sickening people off. It's just being too much. <laughs> Darren must have been sat there when that announcement well, came, and if you put Walking Dead in there, I will never set foot in those parks again. Yeah. Still, a haunted house all year round. Oh, I know. Ag- yes, agreed. That would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, you just think... Just not Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm surprised they never have done, because when you think, like we've talked about on the show before, I can't believe they don't use the horror makeup show more to advertise Halloween Horror Nights. Because I'm sure there's lots of people that go to those parks that don't really know that Horror Nights exist. If you've got a time of the year where it's not being advertised, that is the ideal place to advertise your Halloween event. You use the lobby to sort of... I mean, they have a little bit because you've got the caretaker and the jack statue in it, but use the rest of it. And then actually get some of your, your makeup staff in there to show off what they do for Halloween Horror Nights. It just seems a match made in heaven. Just a thought. So you have, you have the horror makeup show, which when it exits, it feeds out, isn't it, between T2 and the T2 shop? What does? Horror makeup show. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So I have an option where you can either come straight out or you can go into, then go into a walk through horror maze, see the show, and then go and see all the icons. You know they've got they've got all of these great things from Halloween that they could be using. They should just put Jack Presents Twenty Five Years of Monsters and Mayhem up all year round. Just make it a Jack Park. I'd be happy. But uh, but yeah, uh, Terminator Two Three D. It's one of those things that when that when everything falls into place and you've got the right actors, it's absolutely amazing. It is, uh, you know, it's it's not just a bog standard four D show because obviously you've got the actors in and you've got like the pre show with the uh, super oh, <laughs> yeah. that, and it's weird because they they only re- they only changed the um, the pre show video recently. Yeah. Yeah. But that being said, though, I do understand. Because when is the last time you've seen that um, room filled with people? They're true. I, I slept through it the last time we went. <laughs> <laughs> I feel gutted now. Because the oh. last time I saw T2 3D, 
it was in the towards the end of a very that week we were out for 2015 and that that seat drop at the end makes a great alarm if you want to have a sleep <laughs> but there's there's not much of the early stuff left et that's it and again um we had a conversation in the producers club and Stuart Mallet sort of said exactly what i thought and he or he echoed what i said is it's it's the studio's getting all the love again Islands is the park that needs some TLC mm-hmm. and everything new's going into the studios. All right, Dragon Challenge is closing, they're putting something in there. But there's no rumours surrounding anything else in that park, and that's the park that needs yeah. it. Desperately. At this point, Andy, which out of the two parks is your favourite? Uh, you know, I, the first time I went to Universal, I went only to Island of Adventure, only one day. And that was in 2002, so there was a new park still. Yeah. And I felt yeah. to that park in that state. I want that back. Yeah. 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 Absolutely agree. Well, it is. They said when they opened it, it, it is the state of the art theme park, and now it's it's a pale comparison to the mm-hmm. studios, and it's so sad because it was Islands of Adventure that made me fall in love with Universal yeah. Orlando. Absolutely. I don't know. It's it's a weird one. Hopefully they do have a plan. And the thing is, like uh, uh, that's how it started for me. Yeah, yeah, that's how it started for me when I went to Island of Adventure for the first time during October, first Halloween, first time in that park. Yep. That's where I uh, fell in love with that park. It was, it was the same for us, <laughs> two thousand four. <laughs> and somebody somebody commented. I've seen a few comments actually say, "How the hell has?" Shrek survived. I know. P2 gone. I know. But, uh, yeah, they know what they're doing. I, it's, I trust them. It's a them. family show. I'm telling you, they're dumbing the park down. Well, they're not dumbing the... It, they've been doing it for a while. We've seen it because they want to contend with Disney. They need more things that families can ride. You can't shake your head, I right? I can't because shake my head because it's mine. Because Gringotts isn't necessarily a dumbed-down attraction. Forbidden Journey isn't. Kong certainly isn't. Three. Yeah, three fairly new attractions. Yeah. And new technically two of them are based on a kid's three. book. doesn't matter. It's still not. You no, know, I know. I just don't want to see parks that I love because they've always had that you edge won't. just become... A Disney wannabe. Well, that's what they're going to be. They've always they've always wanted to be that. That's where the money well, is, and that's what they're there for. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. I'm very disappointed. T two three D is gone. Yes. Me too. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. Strange. I don't want to see it go. But no. It is. It is what it is. I guess. So. Mm. Yes, I agree. Yeah, with no fanfare. No, I actually spoke to the creator of that ride on Facebook the other night, uh, and he didn't know until a few people messaged him and said, uh, did you know T2's closing? (laughs) Yeah. And he said, no. Bit rude. I thought that was a bit strange. Bit rude. Anyway. Yes. Right. While we calm ourselves down and gather our thoughts, let's head over to Seth for little things. Hi everyone, this is Seth Kaberski from the Unofficial Guides, and I am here bringing you a pre-hurricane edition of all the little things that are new at Universal Orlando. I'm recording this just hours before Hurricane Irma is set to hit Central Florida, so if you don't hear from me for another few weeks, you know why. Obviously, the big news at Universal right now is all about closings. I'm not Mm -hmm. just talking about the park closing on Sunday and Monday due to the hurricane, but also the recent attraction closing over at Islands of Adventure. Dragon Challenge, originally known as Dueling Dragons, is now permanently closed. Construction walls have been put up in front of the attraction entrance and the lockers right next door. But as one thing closes at the Wizarding World, another thing opens. The bypass bridge that connects the Lost Continent to the Jurassic Park area, bypassing the Wizarding World, is now officially on the Islands of Adventure map. Uh, We can expect that with construction expanding around the Dragon Challenge attraction, that that bridge might be necessary to move guests past the construction area. Speaking of closings and things on park maps, 
parts of Kid Zone have been removed from the official Halloween Horror Nights Park map, which is available now on the Halloween Horror Nights website. The Barney, Curious George, and Woody Woodpecker attractions have been completely erased from the map that will be used for Halloween Horror Nights, which is yet another sign that Kid Zone will be going away in the very near future. Something else going away in the near future is Terminator 2 3D, which will be closing on October 8th. Hopefully, some of the props from the Terminator attraction might end up in the Williams of Hollywood shop right across the street. But one prop you won't find there anymore is the third and final cow from the Twister attraction. The first two cows had been sold previously, and now the last cow from Twister has been sold. So if you had your heart set on spending thousands of dollars on a fake cow, you've missed your chance. Oh, While you're crossing the street from Terminator to Williams of Hollywood Prop Shop, take a look down at the street, and you'll notice that Hollywood Boulevard has recently been repaved. Even if you don't see it, you'll probably smell the fresh tarmac. And while we're in Universal Studios Florida, construction walls have been coming down in front of the upcoming Fast and Furious supercharged attraction. The brick entrance facade is now fully exposed, and work is continuing on what used to be the entrance to disaster. Finally, a recent change at operations at the top three Lowe's hotels, Portofino Bay, Hard Rock, and the Royal Pacific, guess at those three hotels who get unlimited universal express access no longer have to get a separate express card from the kiosk in their hotel lobby. Now they can go back to just showing their hotel key card, which makes for one less piece of paper to have to juggle during your universal visit. That's all for right now. This is Seth Kaberski from the Unofficial Guides, Attractions Magazine, Orlando Weekly, and touringplans.com, and I hope to see you on the other side of the hurricane with some more little things around Universal Orlando. That's not the first time they've done that with the uh, the hotel key cards. If I remember rightly, when we stayed for 2015, the machine for getting your express passes was yes. buggered, so we ended up having to use our hotel key yes. cards anyway. So I remember that. Um, yeah. See you again, though. They've re tarmacked Hollywood Boulevard in the studios. The studios yeah. getting the love, Ireland's getting nothing. Ireland needs a bit of titivation. Mm. I don't I don't get it. No. It's got to be a plan. It has to be a plan. As long as it's not knocking it all down. It's just I don't know. I mean, really, the the the, the studios should be the flagship park, really. But I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the idea is. We will find out. At some point. I just hope that we do find out and that they don't end up stopping and then ploughing money into the third gate in that plot of land mm. down Universal Boulevard, wherever it is, and just yeah. leave islands. Because let's be honest, there's so much of that park desperately needs. Yeah. Toon Lagoon needs to go. Lost Continent's about done. Zeus needs something. Pinned. It needs a ride. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. And then going back, I think I mentioned, like, I didn't understand um, why they retracked the Hulk. And a few people got in touch and said, you, you do realise that they needed to keep the Hulk fresh because if they don't keep that land up to the standard that Marvel deemed fit, then the rights revert back to Disney. Yes, so, that's yeah. very and true. And immediately when people said that, I said, yeah, of course, that's... Yeah. I can't believe that. I no said brainer. what I said, yeah. yeah. Andy, how did you feel about Dragon Challenge getting replaced? Oh, I'm so sad about that. <laughs> I've been on it when they were dueling. Yeah. That's the big difference. Yeah. I love roller coasters, and I always liked those two roller coasters. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah. And, I- and blasphemy, I know. I'm just not a Harry Potter fan. What? <laughs> I wish you told me that before we invited you on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I appreciate um, the attractions, but I'm just not a, not a fan. Yeah, yeah no, that's fine. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not bothered the Dragon Challenge is going. I think if it had still been, been dueling, dueling, then yeah. I would have, it, it would have been a very different story I mean, for don't me. get me wrong. Both courses, as, as individuals, are still amazing coasters. But because we've all known it in its previous incarnation, yeah, it's, 
pales in comparison. Yeah, which is, it, which is a shame because, as I say, it was two great coasters. It was. It was. But you will see what yeah, goes Yeah, last in. time I was there. Last, last time I was there, you yeah. had to queue more than an hour for, for the Harry Potters, and it was a walk on for the coasters. So yeah. yeah. I cannot... Yeah. And they, they still hadn't worked out a shortcut for that huge queue. And I think that's why they've got rid of it. They've seen that that people weren't particularly bothered for it and people wanted, I think, like I said, on the, the Producers Club Roundtable, that people expect more from their attractions in, you know, Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley than two exposed steel roller coasters. So I can understand why they're getting rid of them. Yeah. But going back to what you've said, it is potentially that thing of it making it more family friendly. It is and it isn't with that one, I think. We seem to have been a bit down on everything, don't we? Because well, it is a bit down. We need on to find something positive to talk about at some point. Right. So while we're thinking about that, if we haven't put you off going with all of our doom and gloom, um, you really should go and listen to these girls. Hey you, that's right, you. Doesn't listening to the crew at UUOP every week make you wish that you were actually at Universal Orlando Resort? Well, stop wishing and start doing. Mouse and Muggle Travel Company is the perfect place to begin. Their team of concierge level travel planners will help you every step of the way. From finding the right fit for your family and budget to customized itineraries and insider tips. They can handle it all. Even if a hiccup that is up to no good arises during your trip, Mouse and Muggle Travel Company will manage the mischief for you. And for you muggles who also love the mouse, their team of experts specialize in Disney destinations too. And the best part of all, their services are free to you. So if you're ready to plan your next Disney or Universal vacation, let Mouse and Muggle Travel Company do all the work for you. Just go to mouseandmuggle.com and fill out a no obligation quote request. Or send an email to info at mouseandmuggle.com. It's that simple. So what are you waiting for? Just raise your wand and repeat after me. Accio, phone. Didn't work? <sighs> Muggles. Here, try some pixie dust instead. And remember, whether you're a mouse or a muggle, Mouse and Muggle Travel Company can help make your next vacation simply magical. Right, here's something hopefully a bit more positive. Woo! Woo! Let's discuss the new holiday offerings. Yeah, Yay! we sent out an email recently of a few more bits and bobs for the for this year's holiday stuff. And by holiday, we're meaning Christmas. 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 Yes. Yes. One day I will spend Christmas there, or one year. I'd like to spend more than one day. They need to get the Cula stuff sorted out. Yeah, they do. But it's Christmas. Who doesn't like Christmas? I'm not a huge fan of it. Well. I'll just leave you at the celebration. Well, you this go year. for Christmas on your own, and I'll go for Halloween. <laughs> yeah, I will join you, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, let's not beat around the bush here. Tracy will join me as well. Of course, I will. <laughs> I just love Christmas. <laughs> you know, if you you know if you time it right, you get them both. So yeah. yes. Right, so Universal Orlando Resort's holiday celebrations will run daily from November the eighteenth until January the sixth, and they will include. The following festivities. Andy, would you like to tell us about the first one, please? Macy's. Universal Orlando Resort is partnering with Macy's, the global leader in balloon entertainment, to begin a brand new parade to Universal Studios Florida. Universal's holiday parade features Macy's, will feature more than a dozen new festive balloons and over 50 incredible detailed floats that can't be seen anywhere else, all designed exclusively for Universal Universal. Universal Orlando. The parade will also include appearances by the Minions and other favorite characters from Despicable Me, Madagascar, and Shrek. And the jolly man himself, Santa Claus. <laughs> That's interesting then. What? 
because normally they use some of the floats from and Mercy's balloons from, from the actual Macy's Parade. Now, yeah. the fact that they're going to do them all that have never been seen anywhere else is interesting. But and I know... Is it a Macy's Parade then? Well, it says with Macy's though, doesn't it? it if there's says, no Macy's balloons... Holiday Parade. No, they're still partnering with them. It's oh, just right. not the ones from the actual Macy's Parade. But I've, we've talked to Darren and Hunt. No, because it's exclusive stuff. Oh, okay. But we've talked to Darren and Hunter before, and like they're not particularly bothered about going to Universal for for Christmas anymore because it's been the same every year. Yeah. So it's good to see that they are finally yeah, doing something bit. different. Yeah. I think actually, if you if you go on our YouTube channel, one of the biggest videos we've ever done was Darren's uh, recording yeah. of the parade from I think it was two years ago. Mm-hmm. That's still one of my favourite videos. I still remember doing the, uh, oh. in inverted commas, <laughs> live the from live the Macy's footage. Parade with uh, Eric and Darren. Oh, and that, was that was so hilarious. much fun. There's a lot of work went into that, but it was that was when we had uh, Adrian LaPelty yes. on the show, wasn't it? I man? love Adrian. Yeah. Cool. So it's going to all be, all, they're all going to be new uh, floats then. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. And did you say 50? A dozen balloons. 50. 50 15. 15. Still a lot. Andy, have you ever been out for Christmas? Uh, not at Universal. I've been out for Christmas. You don't like to talk about? No, it is. <laughs> the part that shall not be named. Not at Universal. <laughs> Blasphemy. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. Um, you stayed on site with Christmas decorations up. True, true. Yeah, and it was very pretty. It was. For the five minutes I saw it in the dark. Yeah. <laughs> Right, me now. Uh, the Wizarding World. This is the one. Yes. Now, for the first time at Universal Orlando Resort, Christmas is coming to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. It's about time. It is about time. Because in the books, Christmas is a big thing. It's huge. You know. Uh, guests will be surrounded by uniquely themed Christmas decorations, garlands and lights as they walk the streets of Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. Uh, They will also enjoy special holiday-themed food and holiday performances by the Frog Choir and Celestina Warbeck and the Banshees. And as night falls, state-of-the-art project... Projections. I know. (laughs) State-of-the-art projection mapping and lighting will wrap Hogwarts Castle, bringing incredible Christmas moments inspired by the Harry Potter series to life. I do still worry about the logistics of having thousands of people in Hogsmeade watching that projection show. Yeah. But I'm going to reach out to our... PR contact and see if we can get Mr. Aiello on to talk about that this that year. That would be awesome. It would be cool. But uh, yeah, I'm surprised it's took them seven years. And it it seems that JK might be easing off a little bit because I'm mm-hmm. uh, desperate to see something for Halloween Horror Nights with Death Eaters. Do you know what I'd like to see? A Harry Potter Christmas shop. Is there not? Well, you can get bits and bobs. Yeah, but I'd like to see a dedicated, even if it's like a pop-up stall, I'd like to see a dedicated one because then I'm going to take an empty suitcase out and fill it. Do you know what the biggest thing about Christmas at the Wizarding World? Anyone want to hazard a guess, Andy, Tracy? What do you mean by the biggest? The biggest thing that's going to come for the holidays at the Wizarding World. Well, the uh, castle projections are going no, to be No, it's hot big. butter beer. Hot butter beer will be back. No. Nope. I was going to say something with butter beer. Hot pumpkin juice. Hot I'd butter be beer all over hot will be back juice. because they're only doing it during the the winter months now, and it's just it's not nope. fair. Hot cardboard, gross. No, Darren, be with me on this one. Andy, have you had hot butter beer? Nope. Oh. <laughs> it's nasty. It's fantastic. It tastes like cardboard. It's, lovely. it's nasty. It's the nicest nope, you're wrong. It's nasty. <laughs> pumpkin juice all the way. I agree. I do like <laughs> pumpkin juice, but I love hot butter beer. Imagine pumpkin juice warmed through. With the topping from Butterbeer. You just buy it and then leave it Scoop out in the, the sun top. for half an hour while you go on Forbidden Journey. It would just like, well, basically it's apple juice, isn't it? Sorry if I've just spoilt the illusion for everybody. Shh, it's, it's got it on the ingredients in yeah. the back. It'd just be like warm apple cider. Isn't it apricot juice? I think it's apple and apricot and pumpkin spices. Anyway. Yum, yum. Yeah, so that's, that's the Wizarding World's offering. So, Which is awesome. And both of them as well, not just Hogsmeade, Diagonally as well. Yep. So what have you got for us, Lee? 
Tracy's favourite, of course, the one reason she really wants to go out to Universal Orlando for the holidays is The Grinch. So, of course, guests will watch The Grinch's heart grow three sizes during a live retelling of Dr. Zeus's holiday classic in The Grinchmas Holiday Spectacular and join the merry Who's from Whoville. There's too many Who's. As they celebrate the true meaning of the season and bring Christmas to life throughout Zeus Landing at Universal's Islands of Adventure and on sale now. Now? Now. Guests can enjoy a festive breakfast with the Grinch and his friends on select dates. And I know Darren and Nina did it a couple of years ago and said it was fantastic. The guy playing the Grinch is on point. Sorry to spoil that. It is a character. I was going to say, excuse me. No, no, it's not. Because he told me... It's Jack. No, he told me we were (laughs) running away to get married. He promised me. So he's got to be the real Grinch. And are you a fan of the Grinch? I like the Grinch. Cool. He's and a you fun like character. Andy. It's one of those characters in the park that you'd really want to play because you get to be grumpy with people. Oh, the best interactions. Even before I had all of you, the oh, best yeah. interactions have always been with the Grinch. I just... I like grumpy villains. Christmas. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Oh, it sounds perfect. Absolutely. It's, and, and I've actually got some Christmas Grinch fabric that when I do get out there, I'm having a Christmas Grinch skirt made out of. Okay. So you can't let that fabric go to waste. Okay. Right. Where are we now? Andy, do you have another one for us, please? Yes. Eve. To celebrate the New Year, guests can dance the night away at Eve, Universal City Walk's dazzling New Year's Eve celebration. Guests can celebrate the New Year in style with the largest dance floor in Orlando, Life entertainment and endless decadent dishes and signature drinks. Tickets go on sale soon. Okay. So actually, uh, place and reason to get totally wasted. <laughs> yeah. I <laughs> know <laughs> oh, it's expensive, so yeah. Um, the, the the largest dance floor in Orlando. What's that all about? Well, all, all city walk and then just yeah. everybody can dance. Yeah. Do people still dance like they used to? I don't know. I'm old. I don't go out anymore. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I, we don't do New Year because it's boring. But can you imagine being in a place like that? That sort of. I still wouldn't want to do it. Yeah, but if you could just be on the sidelines watching, I'd want the parks open with, and just being there with your cup of tea and your slippers. That'd be quite cool. I think. I, I think that would be a good place to spend New Year. There's worse places. There is Disney. Home. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, you. That was to Lee, not to Andy. I just realised Andy spoke after Lee. <laughs> um, right. Um, hotels. Um, staying on site, apparently, is the best way to experience the holiday celebration at Universal Orlando Resort. Really? I would have thought at the parks, but let's go with it. Let's hear what they've got to say. So all five hotels will glisten with festive decorations and offer holiday activities, including tree lightings, menorah lightings, and Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's Eve buffets. I think that sounds nice. Mm-hmm. We don't have a tree lighting ceremony here. Where? In our house. Do we? No, I said we don't. No. So, yeah, that, so you can go and have holiday fun in the hotels. And be in the parks. Yeah, but when the parks are closed, there might be stuff going on in the hotels. True. So, go on then, what's your last one, Lee? And obviously wrapping up the holidays at Universal Orlando Resort, we'll see the return of the holiday music sensation at Mannheim Steamroller. Ah, I would like to see that. They're every year. Yeah, you'd rather see Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Yeah, but I like these as well. I know Mrs. Aiello, who usually listens, sometimes gets to perform with them, oh, and she is awesome. She is awesome. She is, how cool is that? Because she does the Grinch, the Grinch, the holiday spectacular as well. She's so talented. That woman is a man a man of many talents. No, <gasps> a man, her husband's a man him. of many talents. Summer, Summer is a lady of many talents. Don't tell her, but I have a bit of a girl crush on her. I'm gold. Anyway, they are returning to Universal Orlando to spread cheer for all to hear. And then even a rhyme during a live concert at Universal Studios Florida on November 18th, 19th, 25th, 26th, and December 2nd, 3rd, 9th, 10th, 16th, and 17th. Cool. Yes, I would like to see them. Yeah. Yeah, it's not something that we get anything like that over here, really. 
much, is it? So, no. Um, that's it, isn't it, for the, the holiday offerings? Yep. That's quite nice, though. Mm-hmm. Not, yeah. It's not a bad list, that. No, and it's fair. good to see that they have actually changed it up this year. Like I say, yeah. Darren and Hunter have complained quite a lot on the show before that they, they don't go because there's no reason to because they've seen it all before. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, they changed the parade up. You've got the Wizarding World yep. stuff going on. Um, so when does the park close on New Year's Eve then? That's a very interesting question. I will... Uh, let me have a look. Andy, when do you usually visit when you go over? Is it a specific time of year that you normally look to go, other than Horror Nights? Yeah, if I can, I go during Horror Nights because it's just my favourite time yeah. of years. I mean, haunted houses, can't get enough of them. How many times have you been out to Horror Nights then, Andy? I think five or six times. Wow. I would go every I could, but yeah. Yes. Yeah. Unfortunately, flights are expensive. Yes. No, I absolutely yes, agree. Are. Well, looking at this year, Andy, what would be what would be your top three anticipated houses at, at the event this year? Oh, um, I guess Ash, Evil Dead. Yep. Yeah, um, that one. I like the sound of the scarecrow one. Yeah, um, oh. is it scarecrow the the reaping? Yeah, that's yeah, that looks really yeah. good. And um, I always like vampires. Uh huh. Oh, so the hive. Oh, I, I like more the uh, original houses than the IPs. Okay, so you're mm. very much on Darren's side with that then. I don't mind it because they had some really good houses over the years, IPs, but. Freddy's there and Jakey's there. I'm yeah. happy, but I just like their the new stuff. Yeah. yeah. The park I was don't actually go that far ahead. Oh. So I can't see that far ahead to see what time they close. It's probably not going to be that late because it's all going to be on City Walk, isn't it? I don't know. The park I was at Universal is so weird. Yeah. It could be six o'clock. Like, if you look <laughs> at this month... The latest Universal Studios Florida is open is half past, uh, sorry, nine o'clock. And that was a week on Saturday. Looking looking forward now, half eight. And then by by the 15th, you're down to five o'clock. Wow. Um, and then the week, sort of Horror Night starts, it's up till it's seven. It's Horror Night. Yeah, yeah. Um. And then Islands of Adventure. Seven, no, normally? Uh, yeah, seven o'clock, eight o'clock on one Thursday night. I'm assuming Horror Nights must be on that night. So yeah, eight o'clock on Horror Nights nights and seven o'clock others. I don't understand why they don't, even in the height of summer, why they don't open those parks late. I think, again, going over old ground, but they've spent so much time putting decent lighting packages on mm-hmm. something like Rip Ride Rocket and the Hulk and Skull Island that you don't get to see them because the parks never yeah. open late enough. And then you've got um, <sighs> Cinematic Spectacular. Is that what it's called? Yeah, but they always run but, that when it's dark. And anyway. I was going to say that it needs to be seen in the dark. And if the... Yeah, but they don't do it during the day. Exactly. When the park, if the park's closing early, has it got dark enough? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That being said, with all the new hotel rooms, shouldn't they think about opening longer? You would think so. They're going to have to. Change in the future? Maybe? Yeah, they're going to have to add so. capacity. They're either going to have to put more rides in or open the parks later. I just I don't understand why they don't. Maybe they're going to do... Early opening and late closing for park guests. Well, they do do early opening. Yeah, but maybe they're going to add late closing, add an extra hour for hotel guests. That would be interesting. You know, I mean, that that would also, for me, I would go for the early, maybe come out and go around the hotels for a couple of hours. No, you wouldn't. In the middle, I'd be more likely to go and eat in one of the hotels or something like that, and then have, because you know you're going to get that quieter hour at the end as well. Yeah. You know. Anyway, anyway, I've got one last thing just before, because okay. I want to ask Andy a few questions before yeah. he goes. Um, a rumour that Orlando Informer have been throwing around that I've been told is quite a strong one. Um, and that's, it recently opened at Universal Studios Hollywood is Voodoo Donuts. 
is apparently coming to Universal Orlando City Walk, replacing the Elemental Shop. Mm. Andy, are you aware of Voodoo Donuts at all? No. Go on, Tracy, tell everyone what it is. Most amazing donuts. You haven't had one, so you... No, no. I haven't had one, but I have heard the hype about them. I have seen a docu- like a mini documentary. Really? They've been on the TV oh, right. years and years and years ago. And I desperately need to have, basically, it's a voodoo doll. So it's like a gingerbread man shaped yeah. donut that's filled with jam. And then its heart's been impaled with a pretzel rod. Oh my God. I need, and it's got like crosses for eyes. and. I think I've seen that one actually. I need one of those. And they, are, they also have uh, the maple bacon Okay. Donut and oh, just you look at these donuts and the the fillings and the toppings are just amazing. Some of them sound like they should never work, but apparently they really do. And uh, apparently they blow every other donut place out of the water. I'm all for bringing new things to City Walk because it, you know I think they need to. But uh, problem is, it's all food and they they need entertainment. You know, I thought when they when they opened the um, the Hollywood Drive-In Mini Golf, that we were going to get more things for people to do outside of, like, eating. A reason to stay on City Walk, and the, they haven't. They need something, especially like we talked about um, the How to Train Your Dragon thing. When that survey went out for City Walk stuff, you've got, obviously you've got Blue Man Group, but we don't know where that's going to be in the future, obviously with um, Cirque du Soleil buying them out. But they do need more things to do other than just eating. Yes. Yes, I agree. Andy, when you go to Universal, are you Uh, someone that would spend a lot of time on City Walk or are you just not really bothered? um, I do tend to go outside the park to eat there something. Okay. Have you done the mini golf at all? No. They look great though, but I haven't done it. It's awesome. That is so good. I would tell everyone to do the mini golf. I would certainly do that, but um, yeah, I haven't done it yet. But no, I, I, you know, I'm all for bringing new stuff in into City Walk and stuff, but I do think they need to start looking at entertainment and giving people a reason to stay beyond coming out of the parks and having something to eat and then going back to the hotels. Aye. Are you ready, Andy? Rapid fire. Go. Hogsmeade or Diagon Alley? Hogsmeade. Forbidden Journey or Escape from Gringotts? Escape. Ooh. Hogwarts Express, London to Hogsmeade or Hogsmeade to London? London to Hogsmeade. Spider-Man or Transformers? Spider-Man. Shrek or Minion Mayhem? Um. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Damn. I don't remember when I've been to either of them. Okay. Last time. <laughs> Pumpkin juice or flaming more? Flaming more. Horror makeup show or Sinbad? Easy horror makeup show. Absolutely. T two three D or Poseidon's Fury? Terminator. Blues Brothers or Celestina Warbeck? Blues Brothers. Blues Brothers, yeah. Jaws or Back to the Future? I know somebody won't be happy about this, but Jaws. Oh, Darren. <laughs> Megatron or Optimus Prime? Megatron. In ride effect, fire or water? Fire. Grinchmas or Mardi Gras? Grinchmas. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights, IP or original? We've answered that one. Come. Yeah, original. Original. Uh, Halloween Horror Nights again, Express or Stay and Scream? The Express Pass. Express Pass. Always get it. Zeus Landing or Kid Zone? Zeus Landing. Port of Entry or Production Central? Uh, Port of Entry is fantastic, so yeah. Agreed. Leaky Cauldron or Three Broomsticks? I think it will be Cauldron. Uh, the Hulk or Rip Ride Rocket? Um, although it hurts, I'm still going for the Hulk because it looks so iconic. Cool. One Fish, Two Fish or Kang and Kodos? The Fish. Islands of Adventure Lagoon or the Universal Studios Florida Lagoon? Islands of Adventure Lagoon. Express or Virtual Q? Um, I know the Express, so I'll go for the Express. Back to the Future, DeLorean or The Train? DeLorean. A Reign of Kong or Revenge of the Mummy? Like us, we haven't ridden Kong either. Yeah, I haven't ridden Kong yet. Looks awesome. I've seen the whole ride through videos, but I'll still go for the Mummy for now. Lighthouse or Globe? Ah, uh, the Lighthouse. Yes! Oh, right answer. Yes. You see, the globe, I know it's iconic. It was there first, 
But it's just because I was there in 2002, went to Eintracht Adventure, I just love that lighthouse. I agree. Same, yep. As a universal Beautiful. fanboy, you should say Globe, but I do love oh, the there's lighthouse. there's something special about that lighthouse, though. I yeah. agree. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, I guess we've kind of come to the end of our little show, haven't we? Yeah. Right. Well, I guess then it's just time to wrap this this baby up. Yes. Uh, thank you, Andy, for stepping into the breach, as it were, and coming and helping out during Hurricane Irma. <laughs> it was a real pleasure. It's been lovely having nice you. Thank you, Andy. Yes. See you over there in Orlando. Yes. Or in Europa Park. He hasn't been either. No. See, I'm thinking ahead. Yes. Yes. Um, right, so for, for Lee, myself, and for Andy, uh, this has been show 265. Good night, everyone. Well, that wraps up another unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Thanks for listening. Between shows, please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes. It really helps. But if you're not an Apple user, you can find us on Stitcher, YouTube, Google Play, or wherever great podcasts are found. Head over to our blog at uuopodcast.com for show notes, articles, and more. You can get in touch with us by emailing podcast at uuopodcast.com or leave us a voicemail at speakpipe.com slash uuopodcast. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. Just search uuopodcast. And if you're planning a trip to Universal Orlando or Walt Disney World, please check out our sponsors by going to mouseandmuggle.com to book your next trip. Well, that's a wrap. See you next week.